um, today's video I am going to show you how I shoot and edit black and white photos and my and my processes and, and, and thoughts on on shooting black and white. So I'm going to show you a selection of pictures that I've taken. I shot them all black and white and I'll show you my processes from taking them off my, my camera here, putting them in Lightroom and just how I edit them and, and I'll tell you a little bit about, about the pictures and, and why I shot them black and white. These are the pictures that I've got on my memory card right now. As you can see, they are, they're all black and white. They're coming up on the screen black and white because they're raw but I shot them in black and white. So this is the only color one. So these are the settings. This is a 5D Mark III. You've got this setting here, picture style. And so I go down here to monochrome and then go into info. You can set up the monochrome how you want. So I've got contrast set up a little bit more than normal. And then down here I've got a red filter in. Red filter on black and white, it'll make a blue sky, it'll make black. You know, it'll be a big contrast gap between the blue sky and the white clouds. And that's how I like to shoot black and white. So that's, that's all I do. From there, take the card out. Memory card reader, I probably bought about 10 years ago for five bucks, still working fine. These are the 11 pictures here. Make a folder, black and white video quickly. They're all raw images, CR2s. Drag them in, Boom. that's done. Drag into Lightroom. It'll come up as selected, import. And so I have all these pictures on here. So they're all starting to change the color now as the computer's reading the raw files. And I go straight into the develop mode. So this is how the camera interpreted my black and white shot, basically. It didn't look like this to me when I shot it, and this is not how I would want it to look. So basically I have a preset in here, black and white look 5. And this is sort of similar to how I have the camera set up. So this is a base where I start basically when I'm editing. So I might just try auto here. So that's brought out a little bit more color in here. That's that's pretty much good, you know. I'm not I'm not changing that much. So basically I just sort of go up and down with a few of these sliders that I work with a lot and just see the differences they make and that's basically how I edit. You notice if I go the clarity up and down, there's a huge difference in the amount of spray that's coming off, how sharp it is, how flat it's looking. Notice the highlights makes a huge difference in snow obviously. If I zoom right in here, this is Marcus Keller by the way. He's riding a huge board. That was sort of his thing last winter. You notice the difference here when I go up with the highlights, all the grain starts. But see when I go down with the with the highlights, a lot of that stuff leaves. I'll go down here to noise reduction, put that up a little bit, and see that pretty much gets rid of the rest of it. Noise reduction, the luminescence, it lowers your sharpness a little bit, but I already have plenty of that. This is all very sharp in here. So that's no problem. It's not looking too bad. But by going up with that noise reduction there, it has reduced the, the life of the picture a little bit. I might, yeah, like this one here, I might just bring a little bit more light into the bottom of the pipe. Like this. So that's pretty good. Pretty happy with that one. This is what it looks like and on the screen as well. So this is my goal basically I want to see on my screen here what I shot because what I shot is what I wanted to shoot and it's not just luck somehow that I can make something better on my computer my goal is always that the image that I get on here is the image that I have in my head and that that's what I want to portray the computer is just a way of transferring it from there to everywhere else so this is the next one obviously it's in color again it doesn't look that good in color you could probably make it into something I shot it in black and white though because it is it looks way better in black and white. You notice there's quite a few little spots up here um, on the sensor. There's this tool to get rid of them, it's very fast and easy. Um, a lot of times when you're shooting black and white you see sensor spots more just because of the contrast differences. I normally sort of, when it gets to a point where it's annoying me to fix these up then I'll go and get my sensor clean. The Canon Pro Services they do that for free. So this was a shot I did in Austria. The guy, he's a Swedish guy, Kira. He was just walking up that ridge line actually to go back to a, to a jump he was hitting. And the snow just started billowing up here. 
you notice this is his shadow around. He's sort of behind the snow actually and this is his shadow that makes him look a lot bigger. But I like the fact that it's, it's like a big flame or Volcom like the fact that it looks like a big Volcom stone in here. So they actually used this for the, the latest snow catalog cover at the sales meeting in Berlin that I went to. I saw, saw that the first time. They hadn't told me in advance. So I was pretty happy with that. I want to get the sky a little darker on this one just to give a bit more contrast between the, the whites here. So another trick you can do is go down into the, the color curves here, click on black and white and then you can really start making some changes to the sky colors. Yeah, you know, big differences here if you go from left to right on these sliders, obviously that's way too much, but you can bring out a lot of different details in here because this is a yellow, see, huge differences here. That's way too much, and I'll go for something about there. And the yellows as well. He had a yellow jacket on, so that color still is in there, so I can bring that out a little. See the purple, there's a lot of violet light in the sky, so that's where I'm going to get my darker sky by putting that slider down. This is about where I'll end up with this picture. Pretty happy with that, it's nice and sharp. And this is how it looked on my screen when I shot it, and so this is basically just what I wanted. What a shot. This is in a place called Irolo. So these guys are actually looking at a spot down here to jump off of, but I just thought it was a cool shot. Obviously when it's in black and white it looks a lot better because your eye gets automatically drawn to these graphic shapes here. It's sort of like a landscape picture, but then you realize the human element. Our eyes will always be drawn towards a human element in the picture just because we recognize our own tribe members, I guess. So this here is too white for me. I like that they are darker than the foreground. These days with the good cameras, there's a lot of dynamic range, so we can we can bring all that out. So on the clarity and some somewhere around here, super sharp. I focused on them obviously, but I used quite a long depth of field, so the background sharp as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not changing much on that one. This was well two minutes after the last shot. I basically just swung around to the left, and this was there. On this one, I think I will just copy paste the last photo. So I select that, I go to it, push sync, these are all set up right, and this picture is pretty much how I want it. So this is the only picture on here that I shot in colour. I could imagine magazines would like it black and white, but I also shot it in colour because companies, Volcom or Ride in this case, normally prefer colour shots for advertising just because their products are normally colourful and they want to show what they are. If I think it's a shot that's going to be ad worthy, I'll normally shoot in colour just because that's how it's going to be used. Maybe it's not how I like it best, but most of the time I'm doing this with making money in mind, otherwise I wouldn't still be able to do this. So this is the colour version, I'll edit it in colour now just to show you and then I'll also make a black and white version of it. I'll go up a bit with that one and then down a little there, make sure it's sharp, it's pretty sharp, there's a little bit of noise in there, which I'll get rid of here, it softens it a bit, not to the point where it's unsharp, you can still, you can still see everything, and here I'll also make the sky a little darker, here you can go with the blues, well you can go down a lot obviously, actually overexposed like that it's pretty cool too, but in this case advertising's normally like blue skies and white snow, so I'll go down a little bit with that, and that's pretty much how it would make it the color version. So now just to make a black I'll just create a virtual copy here and as a base I'll go off this last one, sync that one. So that's pretty much how I like that. Play around a little bit with the clarity. That's pretty much how I like it. So now you've got a color version and a black and white version and it's really up to personal taste which one you like better. This is a shot of the sky. I guess this was in Austria somewhere. I love the way the clouds look and formations and how they move so I look up at the sky a lot and I just love how this one looks and here it looks like, I don't know, maybe a cat's foot or some flames, I don't know, maybe my hair when I wake up. But there's even like a face in here if you look, there's eyes and a nose here and a couple of ears, some sort of weird devil doll or something, voodoo thing maybe. But I just, I like it, I, could, I would hang it on my wall just because I think it's it's abstract. People can, everyone who looks at it is going to see something a little different. I'm not going to do too much with that, maybe bring up the whites a little bit. Again, that's how I shot it on my, on my camera and I'm not really changing it. I shot it with that look in mind and that's what I ended up with. 
This is split boarding day last spring, I guess. This was uh, maybe mid-April. This is Blackie and Max. And yeah, we went for a really long good hug, stayed out a couple of nights. I obviously shot mostly colour that day just because we had amazing light. Um, no tracks, we were the only ones out there. Um, but this one I shot black and white just because I'd been shooting colour all day and I was bored maybe. I just thought it looked cool with these shadows here and the black uh, background. See, this is what the red filter will do. It'll be a big contrast between here and there. And it really sort of highlights them. And the, the track leads your eye straight to them and the shadows makes them, it's that human thing again. Your eyes go straight to a human form, we know it. So that's it, that's, that's that photo done for me. This one was that was nearly one of my favourite pictures last winter, and it's nothing really special. It's Will Jackway, a New Zealand guy. Um, the very first Learning by Doing video was about Will, and this was the next day after that first video. I asked him to hike up off the lift to the top. I just saw these two waves here, and I was like, you've got to, got to do something on them. They're amazing. So I asked him to hike up, and he quickly went and hit it, and then we went off and spent the rest of the day shooting and we had a great day and I didn't really think about this picture anymore. I framed it very centered which is sort of against general photography rules. It's not in any of these thirds anywhere. It sort of works, you know, you can break the rules sometimes. Um, I don't like this little twig here breaking into the shot so I'll just crop him out. But I like it when snowboard lines or tracks come from any of the corners. I don't like it if it comes from down here, but if it comes right from the corner, I love it. And often I'll crop a picture just to have that. I just like joining the corners up with the point of focus here in the middle. So your eyes sort of, I don't know, there's a there's an exit and entry from the picture to the point of focus, which is obvious. Your eye goes straight to this. I really just like this picture. I shot two more, so one more when he's coming out and another one when he's down here. But I just like this one better because you can't see the rider. You can just, you just have to imagine it. And I like the shadow. I like that there's no human element in the shadow. Um, the detail down here is, is awesome. And so that's all, I'm, all I'll do to that picture as well. So that was very quick for editing these because basically I pre-edited by shooting in black and white and by picturing the the images as finished images in black and white so there's not a lot of editing process to it which is the way I love it because the less time I'm sitting in front of this beast and more time I'm out with this the bigger my smile gets okay so this is just the process I use to save and export so select everything go back into library um, export choose where you want to put it TIFF I export I export TIFF and JPEG but I'll start off with the TIFF uh, resize image and make sure that's 300 dpi in there so export next i export so i exported jpeg i go down here um 90 something these are these are previews to send send by email to people um, obviously just so they have an idea so I resize i put 1400 pixels long edge change this back to 72 jpeg size and then i put a little watermark on it just uh so they know that it's mine Export that, and now we're pretty much done. That was the process. So I hope this uh, was interesting. Time to get out and shoot again. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments down below here. Um, if you have any ideas of more stuff you want me to show about my processes, yeah, hit me up. I'll do my best to answer any questions. Till next time, see you later.